I don't know what character it is. Do I remember the July Revolution? Of course. How could I ever forget? The chanting, the violence, the smell of gunpowder, the three glorious days. <clears throat> Love the art style in this. <clears throat> Whoa. Act three, the sleeping city. <clears throat> okay. Oh, okay. Voices, voices. I can't believe he's skipping work again. I swear, if I find that moping bird brain at Lakana Joyu. Ah, finally. Good morning, Falcon. Morning, Spa. No, wait, it's two in the afternoon. That means the official greeting is. Where the hell have you been, Lazy Bones? Oh, it's far too early for this level of roasting. Pass the Cabernet Sauvignon. No way. We've got important business to discuss, and I can't do that if you're half drunk. Mon Dieu, give me a break. I haven't had a good night's sleep since the trial. <clears throat> Something on your mind? Actually, yes. It was what that wolf judge said about a revolution. <laughs> sure, that guy was off his rocker. And besides, if we worried about every potential French revolution, we would never get any work done at all. Am I right? Yeah, maybe you're right. Worrying doesn't do us any good. Tell me about the important business you wanted to discuss. Ah, oh yeah, the business. A letter. This one's from the Paris Police Department. Fancy wax seal and everything. That is indeed a fancy seal. Well, go ahead, Sparrison. You may have the honours. All right. Ahem. <laughs> Monsieur Falcon. Meet me on the rooftop cafe opposite Place de la Bastille. I have a proposal. Regards, Inspector Volerti. Ah, uh, that's it. How terse. Volerti's letter has been added to the evidence folder. Volerti's that, um, not so good, uh, police ins inspector. A proposal from the inspector. Interesting. Do you have any idea what sort of proposal he has in mind? <clears throat> Not a clue. So... Are we going to go meet him and find out? I don't know what sort of proposal the inspector has in mind, but we'd be foolish to reject it without even hearing him out. <laughs> Grab your coat. All right. No dilly-dallying, I like it. Yes, indeed, pretzel. <laughs> oh, but before I forget, I need to drop by the hospital at some point. <laughs> what did you eat this time? No, no, it's not like that. Well, not entirely. Remember, he ate the poison chocolate candy wrapper. I need to pay the bill for my last visit. Yeah, that's from that one. Oh, that's reasonable. Sure, we can pay a visit, but the inspector's call should take priority, I think. Yeah, to prove it was poisonous, he ate the wrapper from the poisoned candy. Chocolate. Let's go to the Bastille. Where is it? Oh, okay. <clears throat> it's far too cold to be meeting on a rooftop cafe. Why couldn't the inspector have chosen the comfier location? <clears throat> Who knows? Maybe the inspector likes the view because it reminds him of his days guarding the old Bastille under the ancient regime. Wait, you think the inspector worked here during the ancient regime? Do you think that's how he got his war wounds? <coughs> it was a joke, Sparrison. I'm pretty sure the inspector isn't that old. Well, well, well. 
Severin, what are you doing here? Settle down, JJ. Just like you, I was invited here by the inspector. What could he want with all three of us? It's hardly unusual for the lawyers and police of France to collaborate. The inspector probably has a big investigative role that requires all hands on deck. A big investigative role? Sounds juicy. <coughs> oh, by the by, did you hear what happened to Judge Romulus? No, what? He escaped from prison before we could even try him. Rumour has it the wolf bribed his jailkeeper and then fled for the hills. So he escaped justice. For now. But don't fret. Nobody managed to escape the long arm of the law forever. Speaking of which... <coughs> ah, good. You're all here. Excuse me, Monsieur Mr. Inspector Valetti, sir. Falcon and I were wondering, did you get the injuries while defending the old Bastille prison? Don't drag me into this, you fool. I was joking. You impudent whelps. I'm not that old. I sustained the injuries when the July Revolution, 18 years ago. I was a royal guard. Just a lonely peon. And it was thick with gunpowder and blood. Oh great, now you've set him off. We were given the order to charge at a rebel barricade. My comrades and I fastened our bayonets. Suddenly, boom! Without warning, a gunpowder keg exploded. My comrades were dead and I was heavily wounded. That's when I looked up and saw a looming figure standing between the gargoyles of Notre Dame. <clears throat> it was the Viridian Killer himself. Ahem. This is a fascinating story, Inspector. But perhaps you could tell us why we are here. Oh, right, of course. Why we're here. What I'm about to tell you is to remain strictly confidential, you understand? It's a matter of national security. You've probably heard France is under a threat from a certain heinous group. Terrorists, revolutionaries, or hipsters. I feel that um, two of the answers are correct, but they need to be combined. Revolutionaries. <clears throat> Indeed, rebels. There's a storm brewing in the shadows of Paris. We, the Paris Police Department, have known about it for months. No years. In every tavern and on every street corner, people talk of organising protests and overthrowing the government. <clears throat> the king has ordered for public gatherings to be dispersed and newspapers to be censored, but the whispers of dissent remain. No surprise there. If you take away an angry citizen's ability to speak, they will just get even angrier. <clears throat> Indeed. And that's why it's paramount we find and strike the heart of the rebel group as soon as possible. For that, I need your help. What exactly do you want us to do? Interview the citizens, scout locations, find the secret rebel meeting location that has escaped the eyes of the police. <clears throat> do we have any leads? Just one. We know that the rebels are having weapons supplied to them by a crooked merchant who is only referred to as the Croc Monsieur. Like the sandwich? What? The Croc Monsieur. It's a hot sandwich. Cheese, ham, a little bechamel. Throw on some peppers if it's Friday night. This has nothing to do with sandwiches. Croc Monsieur is the alias of an accomplished and notoriously dangerous arms dealer. <clears throat> In any case, that's everything the Parisian police know. That's everything. That's all you have dem to demonstrate after years of tracking. We already knew they weren't very good. <clears throat> Naturally, as public prosecutor, it is my duty to help the police with their investigative work. I'd be honoured to lend any and all assistance. Suck up. That's very good to hear, Monsieur Cocorico. But what about you, Falcon? Well, to be honest, Inspector... I don't quite understand why you're asking me. <clears throat> I'm a private defence attorney. I work for the citizens who get stuck in legal trouble. Rebel hunting isn't quite my forte. You want to know why I'm asking you? Look around you, Falcon. We're surrounded by corruption and incompetence. The judges are bloodthirsty wolves, the jailers are thieving ravens, and the National Guard are sitting ducks. Look at the slackers and dullards who supposedly protect and serve this country. Nobody cares about justice anymore. You saw my shameful display at the previous trials. 
Those are the results I, I, I produce with imbeciles to assist me. And you three, you care. <clears throat> Falcon, I saw you defending Dame Catalina and Prince Juan. I heard of your escapades around the city, frantically collecting evidence and interviewing witnesses. Frankly, you did more investigative work over the last month than I've seen any policeman do in a year. Not including myself, of course. But Dame Cataline... Wait, she was a murderer. We should, probably shouldn't say this, Falcon. It doesn't matter. You have passion and conviction, and you aren't a total bird brain. <laughs> By my book, that makes you a fantastic investigator, even if that is not in your job description. So what do you say? You want to sit around your office, twiddling your thumbs until another pointless job offer falls into your lap? Or do you want to take this opportunity to do something great and help us track down the animals who wish to harm our glorious nation? Thanks, but no thanks. Um, no, Adam Sims, I'll be fine. And if not, then we get a bad ending. Mm, that's okay. <clears throat> I would be honoured to help my country, Inspector. Consider us on board. Excellent. Just what I wanted to hear. I had no idea you were such a patriot, Judge A. There's nothing wrong with a little national pride. Uh, yeah, pride is all fine and all, but, uh, do we get any compensation for this? Of course. Here's 50 francs. You'll receive another 50 upon the completion of your work. 50 francs? Psh, we're being undersold. Hush, Sparrowson. This is a great opportunity. I don't want to keep you any longer than necessary. You already have the key facts of the investigation. Find the elusive croc, monsieur. Find where the rebels are congregating. Those are your two tasks. We'll check up on your progress in three weeks' time. See what you can accomplish by then. <clears throat> I'll be doing my own independent investigation into the rebel group, JJ. So I suppose this is the competition of sorts. Try to keep up with me. Don't make me laugh, Severin. I'll have all the rebel leaders behind bars before you even have your first suspect. Come on, Sparrison. We have a croc monsieur to hunt. Okay, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> find the elusive sandwich. <clears throat> I knew a little competition would kick those bird braids into gear. Well, Inspector, this has been a productive meeting. I should probably start my investigation of the croc spots sure too. Not so fast, Cockerico. There is something else we need to discuss. Oh, I know that sound of that. It's a new day. Whoa, look at all the places we have to go to. <clears throat> Alright, should we go to the hospital first and pay for um, Sparrison's bill? We go to the library <clears throat> or back to the Louvre. <clears throat> what was Lal Sapatria? Is that the hospital? Which one's the hospital? That is the hospital? Okay. Oh, there we go. The Petit, petit Salpetitria. Oh, man. I apologize for butchering this. Hospital is being renowned for its progressive attitudes towards medical care. <clears throat> we should definitely do that. Let's get that out the way. <clears throat> I can't remember the voice. What do I do for this guy? There he is, Sparrison. There he is, Sparrison. Go ahead and say what you need to say. Uh, excuse me, Dr. Falrat. I just wanted to thank you, you know, giving me antidote and uh, making me well and stuff. What do we do for this one? It's no trouble at all, Sparrison, wasn't it? Of course, there's the small matter of the debt. Uh, right. Let's see. One hospital bed. One dose of specialised antidote. Expert medical care from the attending physician. The total comes to 500 francs. Uh, uh, Falcon, can I get an advance on this month's pay? And next month's and maybe the month's afters. Calm down, Sparrison. I'm sure the doctor's a reasonable man. <clears throat> he will surely allow you to pay in instalments. You think you think Falcon would cover it, considering like he proved the poison, you know? Of course, of course. Oh, thank goodness! My current wages 
I should be able to fully pay off the debt by the 20th century. Hey, your pay isn't that bad. Now, now, there's no need for quibbling. I have a suggestion. You best use some lawyers, yes? If you do some pro bono work for me, I might be able to knock the bill down a little. Maybe to say... 100 francs. Oh, that sounds much more manageable. What kind of legal work do you have in mind? <coughs> Debt collection. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, this actually sounds quite fun. Be a nice change from this croque monsieur nonsense. Yeah, give us the details, Doc. There's a man I did treat him for small injury a couple years ago. He's been evading my attempts at collecting on his bill ever since. I wouldn't normally pursue medical bills so aggressively, but I know the man is a successful inventor. He could easily afford to front the bill. I'd greatly appreciate it if you would pay him a visit and strong arm him into loosening his purse strings. Well, I'm not making any promises, but maybe we could swing by the inventor's house if we have a free minute. <clears throat> Thanks, Falcon. And thank you, Doc, dear. We will dedicate every waking moment to collecting this debt. Wait, I didn't agree to that. Every waking moment. Alright, so we just go do that then. But as well, it might give, might give us a clue where to go after that. Here lies the workshop of Gustav Truve, eccentric engineer and inventor. <clears throat> Pro tip, atelier means workshop. There you go. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Come in. Monsieur, Monsieur Gustave Truve. I am. And you are. <coughs> Debt collectors. Cough up, scumbag. Let's be a little, little bit, 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 you know, less in his face. My lawyers, sent on behalf of Dr. Falret. We're here to collect the debt that you owe. It's time to pay up, Monsieur. Oh, mon dieu. I completely forgot about that. Listen, I'd be happy to pay, but it looks like I don't quite have enough money on hand. <clears throat> what to do? What to do? I know. I have a brand new invention that will blow the doctor's socks off. It's a device that will completely revolutionize the surgical field. <clears throat> I imagine the doctor would prefer hard cash over some gadget. No, no, trust me. This baby will be easily worth 10,000, no, 100,000 francs. The doctor would love it. All right then, hand the device over and I'll pass it along to the doctor for it straight away. Well, uh, it's not that simple. The device isn't finished yet. It's not finished? I know exactly what needs to be done, but I'm missing some crucial parts. Perhaps if you had some time to spare, you could help me out. Run out and collect what I need. Oh, cool, we're playing like a point-and-click adventure game now. <clears throat> Wait, no, Monsieur, that's absurd. If you have shopping to do, then you should do it yourself. Falcon, please, help the man. Can't spend the rest of my life in debt. Right, right, no need to get panicky. We'll hear the man out, at least. Great, I'll take notes. What is it that you need, Monsieur? Uh, let's see. I need a copper pot. Hey, we've got one of those. Well, we don't. But we do, but they, they don't. A pot? As in like a saucepan? What on earth for? It's a necessary component of my invention. I could use it to build a portable electric battery. So when a zinc rod is suspended in sulfuric acid, accompanied by a copper surface, a current is generated. Uh, save me your scientific mumbo jumbo. One metal pot should be trivial to acquire. No, one copper pot. Oh, the copper part is important. Okay, one copper pot. I wonder where we could find one of those. I've seen copper kettles at the horse markets. Although those things aren't too cheap. I can't help but feel that I saw a copper pot somewhere else. Yeah, he's going to make us pay for these things. And then we'll give those to the... What, what else? String. High grade string. To bind some components together. That seems simple enough. I imagine this horse markets will have that in abundance. Okay, can we really afford to flow, flow our whole budget at the market, Falcon? Surely there's a cheaper way to acquire a string. Look, I have a loose thread on my jacket. Take it. 
<laughs> Sparrison. This drink must be higher quality than that, Monsieur. I need something that's fishing line grade. Hmm. Oh, I, I see. Is there anything else you wanted, Monsieur? Some books, confectionaries, alcohol, groceries, perhaps? No, 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 that's everything. Whoosh. All right, I got it all written down. Shopping list has been added to the evidence folder. I feel a little conned. We came here to collect it on a debt and left with a shopping list. We're going to follow through and get Monsieur True's items, right? We'll see. Yes, we are, because I like fetch quests, because I'm a simple man. And when I come back and I get that glowy ding, I feel like I've accomplished something. <clears throat> Plus, we don't have any other reason to go anywhere else, so <clears throat> we might as well go get them, right? Okay, so we need a copper pot and a piece of string. What options do we have? I see Satchel Spider Silverware store. Too pricey. Let's take it down a notch. Okay, how about that place over there? Harry Hippopotamus's Pottery and Haberdashery. Hmm, that name just rolls off the tongue. Still too pricey. We're buying for a mad scientist, not for the Queen of England. <clears throat> what about that little stand? Ruse, odds and ends. Looks cheap, and I've seen a copper kettle in the back. Now we're talking. Excuse me, madame. Wait. Those two look familiar. I recognize you. Weren't you two begging outside Chateau Crinier a couple of weeks ago? Ah, uh, yeah, that was us. Thanks for your generosity, Monsieur. We put your money to good use, see? We started a business. At Rue's Odds and Ends, we sell everything. I suppose a grand congratulations are in order. It's no small feat to pull yourselves out of the streets of today's economy. So... Do we get a discount? A, a discount? Well, we did help kickstart your little enterprise. I suppose we are investors of sorts. Sorry, messieurs. No discounts. You gave us a donation out of the generosity of your hearts. Because you are such nice people. But maybe we can help you out. What is it you wanted? We see a copper kettle at, on your store. How much is it? 30 francs. Okay, we'll bargain on this one, but not the string. 30 francs for a kettle? That's far too much. But this kettle is super fancy, see? Look at them all engravings. It's nice and stout. Look at the handle. Look at the spout! With something like this, you can sip your tea while pretending to be hoity-toity bourgeois. Yes, it's very fancy. It's still more than we can afford. How does 20 francs sound? Oh, I'm not bartering, monsieur. It's 30 francs or nothing. I think she's playing hard to get. Oh, forget it. 30 franc kettle doesn't fit into our budget. We understand. It's a little pricey, ain't it? Did you want something else, monsieur? <clears throat> Ooh. Do you have any string or fishing line? Here we go. That's some real strong thread. Looks to be 10 meters or so. Would that work? I think so. How much? 15 francs. Wow, for string. That's a little steep. 15 francs for string? Come now, that's ridiculous. It's no ordinary string, this is. It's a string with a thousand uses. You could make a fishing rod. You could fix something that's broken. You could play cat's cradle. You could stitch some clothes with it. You could tie someone up. Okay, okay, you both made your pitch. I wonder if we get to come back. Or do we have to come back another day and waste a day? We'll find out. But it's still too much. Sorry, but there's no way I'm spending 15 francs on a piece of string. We understand. Did you want something else, monsieur? I'm going to have to come back and pay the money anyway. Nice. That's all we're done. Thanks for your help. Be sure to forget. Come back if you forgot anything, monsieur. Come back soon. Good thing they gave us three weeks. <clears throat> well, I guess we're going back and we're just going to buy those things because we're not going to get them anywhere else, right? Uh, I'm not going to go tr tr trancing around France hoping to find them somewhere else. OK, 
Okay, so we need a copper pot and a piece of string. What are the options we have? Is he going to go through all the things again? Okay, we're going to just click, 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 click. Okay, now we're talking. Excuse me. Are they going to do the whole thing? Weren't you too... Is she... Please let me say yes, we told you this yesterday. No. Uh, it's the exact same. All right, well... Sorry, messieurs, no discounts. All right. How much today? Okay, at least the price didn't go up. <laughs> Anything else? Copper kettle have been added to the evidence folder. We'll buy the 15 franc string. much 15 francs 15 francs anything else no oh that's right we can go see Reynard at some point <clears throat> maybe we can get him to do some debt collecting he's a fox isn't he 